Selmer Paris, the legendary saxophone manufacturer, has just released another brand new model, and I got it right here. This time they've released both the alto and tenor at the same time, but a lot of people are still confused. Why has Selmer released yet another model? What's the difference between the new signature and the Supreme apart from a thousand bucks? Is one for classical and one for jazz? Which one is better? Which Selmer models are now being retired? I'm gonna answer all these questions and play both the alto and tenor signature saxophones for you. I'm also gonna do a direct comparison between the signature and Supreme tenor models and give you my thoughts on which one you should choose and why. <laughs> Jay Metcalf here from bettersax.com. As you may know, the saxophone world can get a whole bunch of wild theories going pretty quickly that aren't always based in facts. Everything I'm gonna share with you today comes directly from private conversations I've had with the developers and designers of both of these instruments at Selmer Paris and my own hands-on experience playing the instruments. Let's start off by listening to the new signature saxophones. The most important thing to know about these new models from Selmer is that the Supreme is truly a new and original design. It's an instrument that was in development for many years and really stands apart from anything Selmer has produced in the past. While the Signature is more of an evolution of existing models. The alto version of the Signature can be considered an improved version of the Series 2, while the tenor version of the Signature can be considered an improved Series 3. This is really important to note since Selmer has now discontinued several of its existing models. They are no longer producing Series 3 and reference 54 altos, and they are no longer producing Series 2, Series 3, reference 36, and reference 54 tenors. Going forward, the only alto and tenor saxophones they will be producing are the Axos, the Signature, and the Supreme. The Series 2 is still in production for alto, but that too may change. So hopefully that answers the question as to why all the new models. Selmer wanted to consolidate the product line and bring everything up to date. So what are the differences between the Signature and the Supreme? Let's start by talking about how they are similar. They both have the new dark lacquer color and also come in a range of other finishes. They both have the new neck tenon receiver, which has a free floating nickel silver ring and the three point concentric tightening. They both have what Selmer describes as significant intonation improvements. They both have Selmer's new quieter and smoother octave key design and the new low B flat to C sharp key connection mechanism. The body tube is also pretty much the same. They both come in this new case. I've been playing the Supreme on all my gigs for the last few months and using the case it came with, which while it's not perfect, may be my favorite case ever. More on that later. Before we get into the differences, let me play both the Supreme and Signature tenors for you. Listen carefully and let me know in the comments if they sound different and how. <laughs> Thank you. 
I just wanted to let you know that this video is not sponsored at all. Selmer did loan me these instruments for the purposes of making this video. As soon as I'm done with them, they get sent back to Selmer. I'm not compensated in any way from Selmer Paris. It's Better Sax subscribers that make this sort of content possible. So please subscribe now to help us make more great saxophone videos like this. And I want to mention that all the playing examples you hear are done with the Better Sax Jazz Cut reads. These are the best reads I have ever played in my life. And that's why I'm really excited for you to try them out and see for yourself. Not only are they super consistent and responsive, but they are made from organic cane that is grown in a small region in the south of France. And instead of putting them in wasteful single-use plastic sleeves, our packaging is entirely plastic-free. The mouthpieces I'm playing are the Better Sags Burnin for alto and tenor. Check the description for links to all that good stuff. Listening back, I have to say that they sound very similar to me. I don't think I could pick one out over the other in a blind test. That's not to say that they're the same saxophone though. When playing these, you will immediately notice the difference in feel under the fingers as well as the resistance in your airflow. According to Selmer, the Supreme keys feel closer to the body and have a shorter travel distance. They both feel great and are ergonomically friendly. It comes down to some players are going to prefer the feel of the Supreme, while others are going to prefer the signature. You should try both if you can. The necks are different as well. The Supreme plays with slightly less resistance than the signature. There are spots in the tube where the diameter is just ever so slightly larger, making the Supreme feel extremely easy to play. The bells are also different. On the Supreme tenor, there's a spot where the bell is slightly larger in diameter. On the Alto Supreme, the bell is slightly longer. These tweaks are for improving intonation and response on those lowest notes. These things are imperceptible to the naked eye, but you can feel them when you play. There are also differences in tone hole placement, in the tone hole chimneys, and lots of other nitty gritty stuff that while you can't see it, altogether it adds up to give each one of these saxophones its own unique identity and character. It's also worth noting that the Signature and Supreme have a new much larger neck tenon diameter, so you cannot use your older necks on these saxophones. However, you can put a Supreme neck on a Signature and vice versa. So if you were someone who preferred how one of the saxophones felt under the fingers, but preferred the resistance of the other, you could mix and match. Both horns have very intricate engraving on the bell bow and body tube. The new signature has an Art Deco style that is inspired by the tools and raw materials used to make these saxophones. Is one for classical and one for jazz? There's going to be a lot of opinions on this. My take is that both of these instruments are going to be excellent for any style of music you want to play. I feel as though most classical players will prefer the signature though. The final difference is the price. The signature is selling for about a thousand dollars less than the Supreme. Check the link in the description for up-to-date prices on all models and finishes. So the next logical question is why the price difference? That I can't say for sure, but my guess is that these instruments cost exactly the same amount to produce. I recently visited the Selmer factory in Paris where they were in full production of both the Supreme and the signature saxophones. As far as I can tell, these instruments are all made to the same standard using the same quality materials and the same workers and the same machines. All that to say, I don't feel that the Supreme is superior to the signature. I think the price difference comes down to the fact that there is less new about the signature and we're paying the extra for all the R&D that went into creating the Supreme. Yes, these are both extremely expensive saxophones, and you do need to be quite wealthy to buy one. There has been a lot of discussion about the setup of new Selmers coming out of the factory. I have had four brand new Selmer saxophones delivered to my home this year. And while that is not a huge sample size, it's more than most people are gonna get. I can say that three of the four were very well set up and one of them had some leaks that need fixing as well as some other adjustments before it laid the way it should. If you're buying one of these, you're not gonna get it directly from the factory. You're gonna be getting it from a Selmer Paris dealer and it's going to be up to them to make sure 
the instrument is well set up before you get it. I did lighten up the action of the Supreme. I've been playing quite a bit out of the factory. They come quite stiff. I like my saxophones to have very light action. If you're thinking about buying one of these saxophones, you can't go wrong with either one, but I do strongly recommend you try both before making up your mind. On any great instrument, we're going to end up sounding like ourselves. That's what we want. We don't want our instrument to color the sound so much that it's obvious what brand of saxophone we're playing. At least that's how I feel. That's why, as you may notice, with my mouthpiece and my reeds, I sound the same pretty much on both instruments. They feel very different to play and that influences how and what I play. Given the choice, I prefer the Supreme. I like the way it feels under my fingers and I like it's really free blowing, easy to play nature. I think the sound of both of these instruments is excellent, very much that rich Selmer tone. They're both beautiful saxophones, real forever instruments. Now, if you want to see in detail how world-class saxophones like this are made, come with me on a factory tour. You're going to love it.